Hey guys, Nathan Duck River Honey, and it is April 4th, it's Easter. So happy Easter to everyone. Hope you're having a good one. And I'm out uh, taking care of some bee related chores this afternoon after spending the day with family in church. Um, and I wanted to freshen up the lure on the face of most of my swarm traps because we, last weekend, we got 10 inches of rain on Saturday. Uh, we got rain again Wednesday. It was in the 20s, high 20s on Thursday and Friday. And now it's warmed back up. So it's gonna be in the mid 70s today or low 70s. And then it'll be in the mid 70s for the next several days. Uh, you know, it's gonna hit 76, 77, 78 one day. So, at this time of year, uh, apple trees just started to bloom. They probably got singed a bit by the, by the cold. Um, the Chinese holly in the front yard of my house, it is blooming. And generally when those bloom, you know, when redbud is still blooming, but apple starts to come in and Chinese holly starts to come in, that really begins the swarm season. And then looking at the weather forecast, last week would have slowed them down they they would not have wanted to swarm last week at all so that compresses it to this week the weather looks great this week and i'm expecting swarms so i want to get around and uh, get all of my traps relured on the face to make sure that they can find it and i came to this one and i think i've got a lot of scout bee activity if i have not already caught a swarm so i'm going to throw a veil on just in case um, i need it i got stung in the nose last week and i don't like getting stung in the face so i'll throw a veil on and we're going to hop up here and take a look and i'll show you what scout activity looks like All right guys, so I would definitely say that this is scout activity. Bees are flying all around the swarm trap. Uh, it's like they're orienting to it. They're checking out the sides, the top, the bottom, the, uh, the outside of it. They're going in and out excitedly, um, hovering and orienting to it. So definite scout bee activity. This is what it looks like for sure. So hopefully within a few days, I'll have a swarm in here and hopefully it's not one of mine. <laughs> we'll see. Guys, if you've ever wondered what a swarm looks like hanging on a limb, that, that's it. <laughs> that's exactly what they look like. So um, I was just out at one of my swarm traps freshening the lure because the weather is prime for swarming this week. The bloom times are just right. Uh, apple blossom is here. Chinese holly is blooming. Uh, lots of stuff is popping out. And then we're, we've been very cold, very rainy last week, which is going to delay swarming. And then today it's uh, the first 70 degree day that we've had in you know over a week it's dry and for the next week it's going to be sunny and warm so i knew there was a good chance that swarms were going to start start popping out and i was hoping they wouldn't pop out of my hives but this one is out of one of my hives i'm almost positive of that my hives are 50 yards away and what's worse is this is not the only one i've got hanging in a tree today uh, I've actually got one in one of my pear trees up here, and I think it's going to be a little too tall to, for me to get to easily. Um, so I don't know exactly what I'm going to do today. Um, this one I think I can probably get to uh, if I get suited up, but it's not going to be real easy. And I don't know. We'll have to see. I, I may try to shake these guys into a bucket and get them into a, into a swarm trap. Uh, the other ones, I would need a, a, a pole or something to get them down. And um, I don't know. I've got so many swarm traps around, I may just let them go. It's always interesting. You know, I've, I've got uh, a lot of feral stock, and that makes you wonder if 
I've just got bees that want to swarm. Um, it also, you know, my, my, my spring management plan relies on lots of drawn comb, which I don't have. I'm, I'm in my second year and I'm trying to build comb. So I knew that this was going to be a strong possibility this year that um, I was not going to get through the swarm, the swarm season unscathed. Um, no idea which hives these two swarms came out of, no idea. And uh, don't know if I'll figure that out or not. We'll see, I'm gonna get into some hives today and add space where I need to and um, just take a look. Let's go take a look at the other swarm. So obviously this is quite a bit smaller swarm than the first one I showed you. Uh, that makes me wonder if this is a, a virgin queen in this one or if it's an after swarm. Um, no, no real way to know there, uh, at least not right now. But um, it would not surprise me if that was a virgin in there. This other swarm over here is big enough that I believe that's probably a prime swarm and it's low enough that I believe I can get to it. And I would really like to do that. Neat stuff, bees are just fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Let's see if we can find a waggle dance. All right, so this is the bigger of the two swarms. I actually had an extra swarm trap in my truck, so I just pulled a few frames out of the middle of it, spritzed it with just a little bit of swarm commander on the, on the front and uh, on the top of the frames. Very little. You can overpower the bees with that stuff, and I don't want to do that. And now, I think most of them are on this vine here.
just try to get most of them into this box. I got most of them. If I got the queen, then they should figure this out pretty quickly. All right, girls, I know, I'm sorry. I'll just set that at the door. All right, so now, I'll very carefully attempt to get my extra frames in. No, actually, I'm not even gonna do that. I'm going to brush these guys in. most part close them up and we'll leave them there for a little bit see if we can get them to go in they're not landing back on the limb up here so I believe that means that the queen is moved she's either in the air right now or I did get her in here and if I did get her and we uh, very well may be good. I really need this bucket here. Make sure I don't see her. And I don't. So now we're gonna go do the same thing to the other swarm, see if we can get them in a box. So guys, again, I thought that I might have a tough time with swarms this year. I don't have the boxes of drawn comb that I need uh, to make my spring management strategy work the way I want to. So that's why I've got so many swarm traps around. Um, I think it's a bit of a insurance policy or backup plan. But if I'm here and I can actually box one of these swarms, if I can get to it and box it, that's a, that's a sure thing or close to a sure thing. They can still abscond and you know, anything can happen. But uh, I think it's really good odds if you can stick a swarm in a box. So I'm gonna try to get this one as well and uh, we'll see how these two do. bees are reforming on the cluster up in the tree so I think I probably did not get the queen it may take a few minutes but yeah they're reforming so I'll shake them again see if I can get any more down That's 
about as high as I can go on this one without getting a ladder, so. And I'm not gonna go get a ladder. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. Let's go check on the other one. So they are completely out of the tree and they are clustering on this box. So I'd say there's a really good chance that I have gotten the queen and hopefully this will be successful. Sure, I should have brought a sweatband today. It's hot. Well guys, the swarm finally came out of the top of this tree. And lucky for me, they're going into the box. That's neat, there's drones that go with the swarm. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't expect that, but I've seen several swarms and all of them have got a fair amount of drones. Now you can see some of these bees are sticking their abdomens in the air and pointing the tip of their, tip of their tails down and then fanning their wings. They're releasing Nazanov pheromone to call the swarm to their location. They're saying, come here, this is where we go, this is where we go. So that's a good sign, they, uh, they're moving in. They can still abscond. Uh, you know, bees are bees, they're wild animals. You just do the best you can with them, they continuously surprise you. I'll see if I can get a close up of the Nazanov there. These guys have calmed down a lot. Awesome. So this swarm is caught. They're defending this and that as their entrance. Swarms are usually really peaceful. That's why I don't have my veil on. Um, I've only been stung a couple times by swarms. They're, they're usually really peaceful. They're humble, I guess. There's, I've got this feeling that there's humble hives and arrogant hives. Big, strong hives are arrogant. They can expend bees, so they are very defensive. And uh, these small swarms, they don't have the resources. They don't have the numbers to just waste so um, they only sting you if you make them. They, uh, they're usually pretty sweet tempered. So today did not go as I thought it would. Um, <laughs> it rarely does when you're beekeeping. I mean, the bees have a lot to say about how this works. And um, I, knew, I knew there was a really good chance I was going to have trouble with my swarm prevention strategy this year, just because I don't have drawn comb and getting them to draw foundation early in the in the year is a pretty tough thing to do they don't want to do that until the main flow hits um, i saw some promising signs the last time i went through all my hives i saw some white wax and stuff and um, was very optimistic that it was going i was going to pull it off and um, we got some cold weather uh, we got down in the high 20s and a lot of rain, nectar flow sort of stopped, and I could tell that the bees had stopped drawing wax where they had started drawing wax. It had turned sort of a tan color. It gets polluted from their feet uh, as they walk over it, and new wax is, is just pure white. So um, it looks like they were, they were showing that ambition and things were going well, and then the weather kind of pulled them back, and I don't know if that contributed to them swarming or if all these came from the, the one hive that I knew I was late on or, or what, I really don't know. What I do know is I've got a, a strategy and a plan and that is to do my best 
to get these bees to build and not swarm. And if they do swarm, I'll do what I did today, try to find them and catch them if, if possible. And if I'm not here, um, or if I can't reach them or whatever, I've got a lot of swarm traps uh, within flying distance of here. So um, that's sort of my strategy. Now these guys, they will become a new hive. Um, I'll, I'll wait until nightfall and move them to their, their hive location so they will reorient in the morning. And they will become a comb building factory for me. Um, I need drawn comb and nothing, no hive wants to draw comb like a swarm does. So they're really, really good at drawing comb. And I will put a feeder in these guys and I will keep that feeder topped off <laughs> pretty routinely until August or September. Um, I want them to build five mediums, to completely draw out five mediums before fall. And the only way that they'll really do that is, um, is with sugar, unless we just have a phenomenal nectar flow this year. So I'll come back um, after dark and get this, this new hive, that hive, and get them put into their permanent location. And um, yeah, this is beekeeping. It's, you, get, you have to be able to deal with the unexpected. Well, good morning, folks. Uh, as you can see, I came and got these two swarms last night. Uh, or actually this morning at about 5 a.m. and moved them. And uh, I've got a few concerns. I'm not seeing a lot of activity on this one down here, and that's actually the bigger swarm box. They're actually the bigger swarm. And I was concerned that I put them in too small of a box and that they might abscond because of that. So I, it's still morning. I waited until uh, it got up to about 60 degrees so that I could jump in and add some space to them, get some um, syrup put in so that they would be just happy and want to stay. Uh, I also had a queen excluder I was going to put on the bottom of this hive uh, to try to force the queen to stay here. So I don't know if they're still here or not. They, uh, I don't see them hanging in a tree anywhere, but we'll see. Um, so I'm going to jump into these and get them situated the way that I like to get my swarms or new hives situated and Basically, that's just to get them on the bottom board that I want um, Get them in one box if they're small with a feeder and get the top lid and inner cover on that I want and uh, Just get some feed in them and, and make them happy. I want them to like where they're at and just be happy So we'll jump in and, uh, and get to that one other thing I need to talk about is reorienting these bees. Um, I moved them about four or 500 yards from where they were last night, and that is typically a no-no on, uh, on moving bees. Uh, you need to move them three feet a day or three miles, and the reason for that is the foragers will go back to the old location if they recognize where they're at. So this may be an exemption to the rule but i have found that if you jump on a swarm quickly and move it uh, right after you get it in a box you can usually move them and they will orient to the place that you put them the next morning so these two swarms moved in last night and i moved them during the night uh, when it was like 46 degrees this morning they were in cluster everything was good and um, I think they're going to be okay. So I don't, I don't think uh, reorienting them is going to be a problem at all. That's pretty typical. They're all on one side. I want to make sure I cure any spacing issues now before they really start drawing comb. And since they are clustered in here, you got to be careful I don't crush any bees because you don't know where the queen is. All right.
Take these two frames out. Add a feeder. And an inner cover. Alright, so these girls have got a gallon of feed now, but they probably don't know it yet. So what I'm going to do is just dribble a little bit across the top bars just to get them excited. And they will find that quick. Again, I really want them to like this house. I want them to stay. Come on, girls. Come on, hop in, hop in. Now this is a fairly small swarm. And that concerns me a little bit about robbing because I did just pour a lot of feed in there. And I've got other big, much bigger hives within flying distance. So I'm going to put their entrance reducer in on the smaller setting, at least for now, just to make sure they can defend that. Obviously I have bees in here. What I want to do to, those, to these guys is uh, actually just pull, swap the bottom board, pull the spacer out, drop that down, and they are big enough that I really want to uh, I had a second box on top of them so I can actually go ahead and fill their feeder up sure we've got bees in here pretty sure that we do oh yeah that's a box of bees so some issues that I'm seeing here is um, the hive I've or the bait hive I've got on the end of this stand I had set up as a swarm trap so I put some swarm commander on it and bees are emerging they're confused they're trying to orient and they're getting drawn to the swarm commander uh, so that's an issue I, I think that they'll they'll figure that out uh, they'll be able to find their home but another issue is i've got two swarms here uh, one pretty small one pretty strong so if that is a virgin queen uh, in the smaller swarm she will not have the pheromone that that a mated queen would so if this is a mated queen a strong queen then i would expect some drift from uh, the weaker queen to the stronger queen um, what i could do to alleviate that is move them farther apart um, but this is the hive stand i've got set up so we're just going to deal with it let the bees sort it out. Okay, sort of the same deal. I want them on this bottom board. So we'll pop the top here. Ooh, that's a big swarm. So these guys are one, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half frames of bees. Uh, where that other small swarm was two to three. So, um, yeah, I think I was right and worrying about these guys not having enough room 
that's a real concern. If they sense that they don't have enough room to grow, then they could abscond uh, from this hive and go look for another one. And I don't want that. I want them to like where they're at. So we'll give them another box. We'll leave some of that congestion. And we're going to let them know that there is some feed over top. Get their entrance reducer put in. Okay. And we'll take all this stuff and lean it up. Give the bees a nice, easy path to crawl back in there if they need to. That should be good for now. I'll come back later in the day and collect all this stuff. Maybe after nightfall. All right, guys, so I think that's going to wrap up this one. Um, obviously, plans in beekeeping are subject to change at a moment's notice. Uh, I had planned on inspecting my honey production hives yesterday, ended up hiving two swarms out of my own hives, which is a failure of my, my swarm prevention strategy. Um, but I made the best of it. I've got two hives started. We'll see how they, how they go. Um, hopefully all of this goes pretty smoothly. Hopefully I don't lose a lot more swarms, but you just make the best of it. Make the best decisions you can given what the bees are doing. So I appreciate you watching. If you enjoy my videos, and please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Um, share my channel with your bee groups and friends. You know, my big goal in this is to help people get into beekeeping and be successful at it as new beekeepers. There's a steep learning curve, and I'm, I'm doing my best to uh, lessen that curve so that people can get into it and be successful. So I appreciate you doing that. Appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time.